On this day when we're uh, remembering and honoring our fathers, I wanted to share something I wrote uh, in honor of my own father a few years ago. Uh, this recounts uh, an event that happened um, late in his life that I happened to, by accident, be present for. And it's one of the sweetest memories I have of him in his adult years. And it's called uh, Love's Razor. This was on a day when he came to a nursing home to visit his brother who was there, and I just happened to be there as well. My father came to visit his older brother in the Shalom home, bringing love in a shaving kit. I watched him remove stubble gently from those craggy cheeks, then snip little tufts of hair from each ear, and another wild one or two from the family nose the two of them had inherited. A towel, smile, a stroke of that familiar face my father had known all his life. Had I not been there to bear witness, this shower of tenderness would have fallen unseen the way countless raindrops every day, the world over, disappear into an ocean of kindness. Oceans of kindness and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and welcome to this amazing service. This is Stephanie. I'm Frenchie, this is Steve. Let's stand and sing our way into the day. As we come to moments of quiet and remember indeed that this earth is our gift. This amazing creation is given to us, all of life. We come now and invite you to still your hearts, 
to quiet your minds as we think of the love of God surrounding us from all directions. Spirit of light and joy, come to us out of the east with the power of the rising sun. Let there be light in our words. Let there be light on the path that we walk. Let us remember always that you give the gift of a new day. And never let us be burdened with sorrow by not starting over again. Great spirit of love, come to us with the power of the north. Make us courageous when the cold wind falls upon us. Give us strength and endurance for everything that is harsh, for everything that hurts, for everything that makes us squint. Let us move through life ready to take what comes from the north. Great life-giving spirit of the West, the direction of sundown. Let us remember every day that the moment will come when our sun will go down. Never let us forget that we must fade into you. Give us a beautiful color, a great sky for setting so that when it is our time to meet you, we can come with joy. Great spirit of creation, send us the warm and soothing winds from the south. Comfort us and caress us when we are tired and cold. Unfold us like the gentle breezes that unfold the leaves on the trees. As you give to all the earth your warm wind, give it to us so that we may glow close to you in warmth. Humans did not create the web of life, but we are a strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. Let us do good for all. And together we join our voices in prayer. Loving God, your divine melodies fill the world and every creature has a song. From the wolf cries in the night to the bluebird trills in the morning, Spirit, you give voice to them all, including us. Thank you for the voices of warning and wisdom, of justice and comfort, of hope and joy. Teach us the harmonies of love so we may join all creation in one great song of praise to you. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Acts. On the day of Pentecost, Peter was pleading and offering many logical reasons to believe. Whoever made a place for his message in their hearts received the baptism. In fact, that day alone, about 3,000 people joined the disciples. The community continually committed themselves to learning what the apostles taught them, gathering for fellowship, breaking bread, and praying. Everyone felt a sense of awe because the apostles were doing many signs and many wonders among them. There was an intense sense of togetherness among all who believed. They shared all their material possessions in trust. They sold any possessions and goods that did not benefit the community and used the money to help everyone in need. They were unified as they worshiped at the temple day after day. In homes, they broke bread and shared meals with glad and generous hearts. The new disciples praised God and they enjoyed the goodwill of all the people of the city. Day after day, the Lord added to their number everyone who was experiencing liberation. And this, my friends, is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Each one of us, each one of you is a word of God and in that spirit I share with you the peace of God and invite you to share the peace of God with each other.
going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. And rejoice in the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to dance when the Spirit says dance. <coughs> dance when the Spirit says dance. I'm going to dance when the Spirit says dance. And rejoice in the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to laugh when the Spirit says laugh. I'm going to laugh when the Spirit says laugh. I'm going to laugh when the Spirit says laugh. And rejoice in the Spirit of the Lord. Shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna dance when the Spirit says dance. I'm gonna dance when the Spirit says dance. Gonna dance when the Spirit says dance And obey the Spirit of the Lord Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. And welcome to the second Sunday of Pentecost. Pentecost goes on because it is a season, like our other seasons. Uh, and I know that. Uh, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and then comes Pentecost. This year, Pentecost lasts for 24 weeks. I'm sorry, you're giving me a message that I'm not getting. You're about to get burnt. Oh, I was too close to the candle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I was going to introduce the subject of fire, <laughs> but not in that way. <laughs> but at any rate, to continue, Pentecost is only lasting does in fact last 24 weeks. Sometimes it's longer, 26 or 28. But Easter was late this year. Not as late as spring was here in Minnesota, but it was late. So according to the scripture, the Jews were gathered, that was to say they were gathered in a room. And my sources, the studies that I've done, say that this was a large room perhaps a hall, one of many such halls that were located in the temple and were made for having celebrations like Pentecost. So they were gathered in a room, much like we are gathered in this room. These sources also tell me that there was perhaps as many as 150 people that were gathered together in this room. And they were there to celebrate Shavuot, S-H-A-V-O-U-T, Shavuot, was a twofold celebration. The first part being a celebration of the first spring harvest of wheat. Obviously their springs were a lot longer than ours. But this was the harvest of spring wheat, which was probably a celebration that had gone on since the beginning of agriculture. The second part of this celebration, Shavuot, was the memory of Moses having come down from Mount Zion and brought the Torah to the people. Now this occurred 50 days after Passover, 49 days because the Exodus began the second day of Passover. 
So after this 50-day, 49-day journey into the desert, they came to a, a time where they thought they were far enough away in distance and far enough away in time that they could begin to think about settling down. And that's when Moses brought to the people the Ten Commandments, the law. This transformed this nomadic tribe into a nation, the nation of Israel. This was the beginning of their nation. It's much like our celebration of the 4th of July. Now, they may not have blown off firecrackers, but they probably did blow the ram's horn, the shofar. And while they didn't serve hot dogs, they did have bread and rolls and other treats fresh from the oven, made from the flour that had been harvested the day before, ground into whole grain flour, and made into the treats that were hot from the oven. This was even fresher than bakery fresh. Oh, this was good. Now, there may have been speeches, there may have been scripture readings, and during this wonderful celebration, right in the middle of it, the scripture says, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire room where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now as Nate told us last Sunday, this Spirit of God descended upon them and it descends upon us and it fills us and as Nate said, it gives us fire in the belly. Oh, I love that phrase, fire in the belly. And that's what these people experienced. And now that we have that fire in the belly, and even though the Christian calendar refers to this time as between Pentecost and Advent as ordinary time, we continue to be filled with that Pentecostal spirit. And with that spirit, we continue to have that fire in the belly. So now the question is, what do we do with that? Now scripture tells us that they went out into the streets and began speaking in tongues. And the people were amazed to hear this. And they wanted to know, where did these people come from? Who are these people? And for the first time in history, they were referred to as Christians. This is the beginning of the Christian church, the birth of our church. This is our beginnings. Now, Many of us don't, as Methodists, don't really emphasize the gift of speaking in tongues. Although some of us do speak other languages. I know I speak three different languages. I speak English, David, English. I also speak conversational cat. Meow, 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 meow. And I speak the language of love. Now I'm not talking about erotic love, I'm talking about the love of God. Now the Greeks had different words for different kinds of love. Agape, which means the love of God. Philia, which is brotherly love, the love of humanity. And storage, love of our family, our parents, our children, our siblings. And we, in fact, here in Sacred Journey, at the end of our worship, we express and proclaim that loving. We bestow blessings on men, women, children, animals, creation. Now studies say that 80% of communication is nonverbal. And although we don't speak in tongues, we communicate in many ways. When we pass the peace, as we just did, we don't touch each other the way Joe Biden does, but <laughs> we do share a handshake, a touch on the arm, some of us even hug. And these are our nonverbal ways to communicate the love we feel for each other. Whenever I come in Sunday morning through the doors from the parking lot, I look down the end of the hallway and I see Jim McChesney. 
He's wearing his name tag and a smile, and before I could hear a word he might say, I see him, and it, he tells me that I am welcome here in this house of God, that I am wanted here. I am loved. I am needed here. And when we enter the doors to this room, we are greeted, given a bulletin. If we see somebody that we've never seen before, we'll go up and greet them. And if you see somebody who's looking at the pictures on the walls around this room, you could pretty well guess they might be new to this room. And if they're reading the little plaques, that means they're interested in this room. They're interested in knowing what's going on in this room. What is going on in this room? We are. We are the people of this room. We are Christians, and we need to pass that message on. When we go into the streets, we may not have the gift of tongues, but we can carry that message. Hold the door open for someone, help somebody load their groceries into their car. We can join, as we have been, together to try to save the planet, to preserve this gift that we were given. We can volunteer. We can volunteer the Dignity Center, community meals, uh, donate to the thrift store, join the green team, learn to become planet keepers. These are all things that we can do, though these are ordinary times. The Pentecost goes on for day after day, week after week, and we continue to pass this Pentecostal message. Now, some of you may have noticed that I like to wear a little red from time to time. <laughs> all right, I like to wear a lot of red, all the time. I'm always wearing red. I bought some white t-shirts a while back, and after I washed them, I noticed that they'd begun to take on a reddish tinge. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened, but it does afford me the opportunity to continue with my personal tradition of wearing red, red all the time. And what happens is I'll be in the grocery store or standing in line at the bank and somebody will notice and make a comment, say, yeah, I like those red shoes, I like the red socks, I like the red hat. And this gives me an opportunity to begin and share a conversation with somebody I have never met before in my entire life. And during this conversation, I'm sometimes able to share why I wear red to share that Pentecostal idea. These are conversations that are very, very meaningful. And what I'd like to do is I would like to ask you, each one of you, as you go out into your ordinary time, into the streets of your community, I'd like you to take that fire in the belly, that Pentecostal love that we have, and share that. Share that with anyone and everyone that you meet as often as you can. That's what I would like each and every one of us to do. Now, you don't even have to wear red to do that. So you could share the fire in the belly, the Pentecostal love with everybody. And I ask you this in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, and I thank you. Amen. So now you know we can all wear red for the green revolution. <laughs> Thank you, David. Our love begins with the thoughts in our hearts toward those we know and even those we don't know as we offer prayer. Prayer for believers is never just ordinary or an exercise. Prayer is effective. And there are many, many testimonies in this room about the effectiveness of prayer. So we invite you to share your prayers. Begin, I'll begin with a prayer for Ann Buchanan, who is here. You know that Dick passed away and Dick's service is going to be in this room on the 21st at 12 noon. And so you are invited to share 
your love and support for Anne in that prayer. And as we receive that prayer to our hearts, we hold it, release it to God. I would ask for your prayers as I begin to confront my next health issue. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm confronting and to be continued. I would also ask for your prayers as the Naughty Quilters group transitions into our next iteration. I want to be long-winded. I want to thank David for his message he gave me, he gave us. And then I want to thank Nate and Sarah and Avery for being here. Katie for being here. Goodbye. Our um, oldest granddaughter is going to go into surgery to um, correct her uh, leg. She has cerebral palsy and it kind of twists. And so it's going to be a very complicated process of cutting her tibia in half and twisting it to get her hip aligned. So it's going to require uh, a long time off of her feet. and. Of course, the family's pulling together to be with her, but we ask for your prayers that it's a successful surgery. Ron and Carol Hagberg are dancing and lifting toast in the air and screaming hooray because all of Ron scanned said no cancer present. I hope that this week you can join me in prayer for uh, a dad whose name is Wayne because Wayne Jr. is being released from jail, incarceration. He's 26 and he's on his way to a new life. He needs support and friendship and guidance in a new path as he rejoins his family and his children. Here's for Wayne Jr. Join me in, in praying for uh, Eileen Marie and also Stan, uh, members of this community. As uh, <coughs> Eileen goes through recovery from breast cancer surgery and for both of them also uh, as they prepare to move. So prayers for both Eileen and Stan. I'd like to give prayers of thanks for the incredible support all of you are giving me from all quarters. But I would also like to ask for prayers for three women that have had injuries to their um, brains. 
One is my, my brother-in-law's sister. Peggy fell off a horse. Another one had a small stroke. That's Kate. And a third one, um, Elaine, um, has something we don't quite know. But um, your prayers for the, our dear brains. <laughs> I'd like to offer prayers of gratitude for a first cousin family reunion in California this past week. And um, we hadn't seen each other since we were kids for the cousins that lived on the West Coast. And we had a cousin from Australia come who we hadn't met before. So I give thanks for this beautiful time together. And we join our voices together in prayer. Holy One, be present among us for the sake of all human beings and reveal your love in our compassionate care for others. To one and all, give life and peace in all ways. Amen. As we continue, you're invited to come and share your gifts, which you would offer for the health and moving forward of this ministry. Remember that gifts that you place in the heart-shaped plate support ministry and operations here at Hennepin, and gifts that you place in the ceramic bowl are given to outreach ministries specifically. You're invited to share and give generously. Shall 
It's our custom every week to take time in our service to honor and celebrate the good news that you have brought with you here this morning. This is a time for us to hear about your birthdays, your anniversaries, your beginnings, your endings, important chapters that are closing or starting in your life. Anything that is good news for you, we want to hear and offer our blessing. So I invite you, if you have good news to share, to come forward, and we will hear it together. I celebrated my birthday yesterday. I completed um, radiation treatment on Thursday for my breast cancer and think I'm probably through the worst of it, I hope. I want to thank you for all your prayers and I should have done this uh, Your prayers and kindnesses of many kinds and I can't name them all, but thank you. Just last week, Ruth and I celebrated 54 years of marital ecstasy and bliss. Well, <laughs> marital, marital. <laughs> also, this last week, um, Wednesday was my last day of teaching English, and in translation, that means no more red pens and countless essays. I was having a conversation with Emily, and I would be very interested to know how many of you are here for your second or third time? Ah, perfect. Um, Emily and I decided that it's probably more significant, all due respect to our first time visitors, it's probably more significant when you, they come back. <laughs> and I would like to celebrate them for coming back. <laughs> and also this past week I um, uh, almost shared a birthday with Kent Peterson uh, and we had a celebration <laughs> Yay, happy birthday. coming over to stand by this man um, 33 years ago at Koinonia we celebrated our wedding and um, Bob rode in on a horse <laughs> and and Sally arranged for, um, you tell that part. Oh, well, we had a couple of uh, dramatized scripture readings. And you're going to tell them the whole story, the whole wedding? No, just the part about <laughs> Tom, Tom being Jesus. Hmm? Just the part about Oh, and Tom. Tom uh, uh, dressed in his uh, best uh, uh, scout um, uniform, scout master uniform, to, 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 so we would know that he was Jesus in the story. <laughs> so that was 33 years ago. Also, also because I happen to know this, uh, Jim and Meg, Meg McChesney celebrated their umpteenth wedding anniversary on the same day that we did. Yeah. Uh, come September, um, I will have uh, lived in the uh, United States in Minnesota uh, for 39 years, and, uh, but I had, until this time, failed to be anything but an immigrant. Um, and uh, I applied uh, uh, for citizenship uh, in February last year, and I have now been approved to be a United States citizen. And uh, the, uh, the, the ceremony will be on June 24th in St. Paul, that's the naturalization, yeah. So for all this good news, we extend our hands and our hearts and our blessing as God grant you many years. There is one amazing celebration which we are delighted as a community to share today. And let me just say that I, 
I can definitely identify with this person and with this celebration, and I can tell you what it means to get to this point. So, Stephanie, would you come on up? So we are delighted to be celebrating. Why don't you stand right here so I can look at you? Um, Stephanie's ordination on um, on Tuesday. Uh, with the Methodist Conference, and it is a wonderful milestone. Um, and what we have had the privilege of is your company and your um, your sacredness these last couple of years. You have shared your gifts, your incredible talent with music, your um, gifts with our, our youth and their choir. The numbers have grown under your tutelage. Um, and many, many messages of hope and inspiration in this community. And so as um, in honor of this day on Tuesday, we'd like to share a gift with you so you don't forget us. I can't forget you. <laughs> you can open it. You, can you? Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to put it on you. We, uh, we sing this song when we're sending people on their journey to bless them. We've been doing this for a long time in this community, and so we sing it now to Stephanie. Continue on your path Exactly where you're going Life's a sacred journey from time continue on your path exactly where you're going life's a sacred journey from beginning on to end. and the best part of it all is that um, Stephanie has accepted an appointment to Good Samaritan Methodist Church in Edina where she'll be the senior minister starting the 1st of July. David, you picked a really interesting time to want to become a citizen. Wow. <laughs> we, can use, we can use you in the resistance. Uh-oh, was that political? Uh-oh. So, there's a lot going on. We're really excited. By the way, if you haven't had enough cake, just saying, next week we're doing it again for Andrew Hackett. Because next, next week, the 23rd of June, is Andrew Hackett's last day with us as he transitions to Ohio to be with his family. So we're going to bless him and wish him well and tell him how much we appreciate, have appreciated his ministry. So I'm just saying, cake is good. June is cake month. The green team is meeting for the first time on the 20th. If you are still interested in becoming a part of Hennepin's green team, it is not too late. All hands on deck, as we have heard in this space over the last few weeks, it is urgent. We are all needed, your brains, everything. If you haven't got a sense of it, see John Dunlop, he will fill you in. That's not a joke. He knows more about this than, he's forgotten more about this than some of us will ever learn. So, 
The Summer Worship Series is beginning on the 30th. It is amazing. It's the gift of wonder. And I want to take just a moment to say that this is an opportunity for those of you who are the creative, visionary, hands-on, get-your-hands-messy people. This is your time. And so we are deeply interested in you helping to make the next eight weeks of summer worship fantastic by sharing the story. And sharing the story and being storyteller does not necessarily mean talking. The wonderful thing about this worship series is there is going to be finger painting, there is going to be all kinds of lovely creative stuff. Carol, I'm looking at you. <laughs> and if you're interested and you want to know more about it, the series titles are going to be up next week in, in worship so that you can actually see and then start to discern whether you might be one of the storytellers for the summer. That's pretty much all I've got. Hadn't it been a great day? It's fantastic. In your bulletin, by the way, as we are thinking of action and preparing for our call to action, Take a look at things which you can make a commitment to and then add more to it. We are going to make a difference in our world and we're going to make a difference for generations to come. Let's stand. Two. of the earth be with you the peace of the heavens too the peace of the river be with you the peace of the ocean too deep peace is falling over you God's peace growing to you the peace of the earth be with you the peace of the heavens too the peace of the river Ah, uh, animals, ah, uh, creation. <laughs> <laughs>